Welcome, friends, to a new chess game. Uh, my third game back at the club. Over the board, game three. We are taking a look at... Um, I'm with the black pieces. I'm playing an opponent that is 1629, so they're pretty hard. I'm Nick Sloan. Let's take a look at this game. So I played a Karo Khan. He played e4 d4 c6 d4 I played the uh, traditional Karakhan defense with d5 and uh, he played knight to f3 or c3 and when we went over the game after um, he he criticized me for this move um, which is the third most moved played um, in this opening. So I thought that was a little odd. Um, I am familiar with this move. Um, it scores 48% win for black. However, um, I may not know how to convert this and go far and deep into these lines, but I do know some of the uh, reasons for it. You, you try to take the square away from any knights that might be coming here. Um, I also wanted to delay hoping that he might either uh, exchange or push forward uh, which is more of what I'm kind of used to but yeah he criticized me for this move and said it was incorrect uh, which I don't believe it is um, since um, he played the next mainline move which was knight to f3 I took he took uh, on e4 and I played the next um, move which was bishop to f4 attacking his knight and what's funny is he actually he's the first person he said that this was all theory um however he's the first person to actually leave this particular uh line um now it transposes right here this is now back found this position is not found in the database but this particular uh, position is so how we arrive here I'm not exactly sure um, but still it's it's okay now here is where he actually makes his first move outside of what we found in the opening and um, this is not found in I couldn't find anywhere um, so I'm not exactly sure so I'm gonna click bring up the analysis and think um, the opening right here the next line is h3 for him or a4 um this is probably the most played move and then my next move is e6 and it would continue from there but um it's a little odd he gave me a lot of criticism for the beginning of this opening even though that um he was the first one to actually deviate from the opening which i thought was kind of funny um that's okay i'm not an expert in the carol Khan. um i'm learning it so it's not something I've played a lot. It's something I changed to and I'm working on because it's a D4 opening and it's kind of the opposite of the London, it feels like. Um, so that's kind of why I'm playing it for black and I can kind of play it uh, for uh, no matter what white plays, which I thought is really interesting. So he wants to peel that bishop off like right away. Um, Obviously, that's what he's indicating by making that move directly because there's a lot of better moves um, from this position. Uh, for instance, h4, he can try to undermine my bishop right away. He can uh, do bishop to d3 or even bishop to e2 uh, or h3. These are all worth uh, investigating, uh, but kind of just a one move attack seemed a little premature to me. Um, but if he wants to allow uh, me opening that up that's fine uh, I was okay with it so he actually takes it like right away like I was expecting him to do so and um, I took with the h-pawn to free up my rook so now I've got an open rank uh, going towards this king and I feel like I've almost already equalized uh, because uh, I'm a little bit more developed uh, kind of than he is he's moved his knight a couple of times and I haven't, so I feel like uh, I'm in a pretty decent spot. So he moved bishop to d3. I moved uh, knight g to f6. And we're pretty close to even. So um, I haven't even finished the opening yet. And 
I'm right in there now. Here's where I had some trouble coming up with plans. Um, actually, I feel like that's the wrong move. Nope, I'm sorry. He moved here. My apologies. Not, not bishop to d3. Bishop to e3. So my idea... Um, that's why I couldn't come up with the plan because I made the wrong move. I apologize. So uh, my next idea is to... Um, he's obviously already created an imbalance with um, not having the bishop pair anymore. So um, my idea is to get that back. So he doesn't really have a good move anywhere for his bishop. So he's kind of blocked himself in by putting his queen um, right there, which I thought was quite odd. Um, I still think bishop to e2 or h3. Um, yeah, bishop to e2, c3 seems to be pretty accurate. You can stop all these types of threats. Whoops, not that one. Here, oh my goodness. Here and then here, check. Uh, so he can kind of stop those. That's a key square uh, in the Karo Khan uh, if they haven't moved c3 or put a knight here. So. Yeah, I mean, there's some options, but um, I don't feel like queen to c2 is definitely not uh, a, a good move here, I don't believe. So um, as you can see, there's a reason for it. Um, now, I probably didn't make the most ideal moves, although it looks as though I should have played e6 here. Um, I did not play e6. Um, my idea was to get the bishop back and go to a bishop and knight endgame if it gets down to that. So I've actually given whatever advantage I had by him making that move, um, I gave right back to him by making a poor move. Um, and it didn't matter because he played c4. Now here, I believe, um, I was expecting him to actually move a c4. Um, but actually, what I, I thought he was either going to play c4 or he was going to castle queenside. And uh, bishop to g5 is his best move, and then castling queenside is his second best move, at least in this position. But um, he played c4, which is much more favorable for me. So I did exactly what my plan was if he does that, which is to take the knight. Um, and I did take knight to e3, and he took back with the queen. Um, I was fully expecting him to do that, and then, you know bring his bishop here and then castle. Uh, that was how I thought this game was going to go. Um, but for some reason, he decided to take back with the queen and um, further delaying his completion of development um, by, you know, another move. I, I'm, now he's moved his c pawn, so I don't think he really wants to castle queenside anymore. At least that's what I'm thinking. So. I was expecting him to do c4, we trade really quick, and then he's going to castle. Um, but he must not have liked my you know, rook being on this open file, is my guess. Um, so I moved queen to uh, e a5. Uh, I, I was... I had a bunch of plans. I had a lot of trouble coming up with a plan here. Um, I was thinking things like knight to here. I was thinking of pushing my pawn to get my bishop out. And I thought, well, you know, I need to, I feel as though right now I have the advantage because he's kind of delaying doing some things. So I'm gonna open myself up for castling uh, queenside and then potentially maybe later, if I don't do that, I have the option of moving forward. So what I calculated, um, was where I was going to put my queen after a4 or a5 check. Um, I expected him to come here. Um, and then um, I calculated just taking and, and getting him off of castling. And the other move that he I calculated was moving queen to c3 stopping check. And here is the, where I calculated the most. Um, I couldn't find the best path. Um, I wanted to, with ideas of bringing my queen here, but I couldn't come up with another plan after that. Uh, I had nowhere else to 
go. Um, so I abandoned that plan and I realized that if he wasn't going to take, if he wasn't going to move here um, from here. So I spent a lot of time calculating at this particular instance. Actually, if I look at my book, uh, this is move 12. So move 12. I spent like 20 minutes uh, thinking almost here um, on the next plan. So I was actually down on time uh, after this move um, because I was trying to figure out how to plan the next move. So um, it, I didn't like any of those things. So I had to calculate this, which is exactly what happened in the game. Um, and then I found this next move, which um, actually seems to be the next, the best move according to the engine. Um, I calculated this here and I believe his next move, um, I was, this is where I didn't know exactly what he was going to do. I was expecting him to come here, but he did not. Um, he moved, uh, he made a move that I did not expect, uh, which was here. Uh, which to me, I did not understand. Um, I, I, I guess I totally overlooked it. Um, I actually thought that he, uh, at this point, I did calculate him castling to, to get his king to safety because I mean, this is kind of a useless check and then bringing his king to here. I did calculate this um, and I thought this was, I thought this was okay for white. Um, so I did calculate that, but um, I thought it was still favorable for me, but um, white was kind of equal and we we're gonna just continue playing a, a difficult game. I did not expect uh, this move uh, at all. And it seems as though that was actually a mistake and um, e takes d4 is actually the best move here, but um, I did not make that move. I actually castled, and this is where I had come to uh, my calculation. So I calculated all of this thinking that this was going to be the thing, only instead of his king here, I calculated it being here. Um, so a little minor difference, but uh, it seems to be fine for me, which is, good. Um, valuation shows almost a point ahead. Um, so I feel pretty good um, at this. All right, so let's go back. I feel like I've made some moves here, maybe in the wrong order. Let's see. Okay, so move 11 is, uh, takes d4. He takes Uh, move 14, okay, e4, or e5, rook to b, nope. Uh, I'm sorry, he did not move rook to b1. I was expecting him to move rook to b1. I apologize. I was expecting him to either castle or move rook to b1, but he did not. He moved rook to b1, which, or not e1, b1. This is the move I did not calculate. Um, I didn't quite, um, actually, no, I'm sorry. I'm getting mixed up with my thinking. So I did calculate uh, this. I did calculate him doing uh, this. I'm sorry, I got confused with the D, the B1 move or the E1 move. Um, I fully expected him to grab the open file and then I would castle and then it would be a game from here. Um, and I expected that with me to move my knight here and then push. I was actually really surprised when he made this move. Um, Cause my idea was to move my rook over and then uh, push my pawn. But he pushed this back, which um, I thought was kind of interesting. I wasn't exactly sure what his plan was at this point. Um, I thought for sure that uh, he was going to put his knight here and then uh, trade. Um, I was expecting him to maybe take the pawn 
uh, he obviously can't because of the bishop. Uh, that's why I moved here. Um, but this still all seems good for me. So I just pushed the pawn, pushing his uh, bishop back, and then um, developing my piece, expecting him to push uh, b5. But uh, he did not push b5, which I thought to be interesting. I thought he would just take complete control of the dark squares and then uh, move his... I thought he was going to do something like this. Um, and then to me that seemed to be equal because um, then I was just going to come here and hope for the best. Um, and yeah, it's actually an even game, which I thought was interesting. Uh, but he didn't do that. Um, he moved h3 instead, uh, I guess preventing my knight from coming here. I had no intention of actually bringing my knight here. So, um, but I guess it takes away a key square that I could potentially use. Uh, I was confused by this move. I wasn't exactly sure why he made that move. Uh, maybe giving his king uh, a safe square, but uh, my bishop's on that square, so I'm not exactly sure. It does show it as his second best move. His best move here is c5, which I totally expected him to make. Um, but he did not. So he moved h3, and um, I guess my next move should have been c5, which I did not make. I am doubling up on the pawn, and it seems as though I've given uh, the game back to him. So everything seems to center around the c pawn area. Um, this would have been the sequence. Uh, castles, I guess. And then king to c7. Okay. It seems to equalize for me. I'm not sure why that would be better than what um, I did, but uh, my intention was to... Um, here I thought for a little while, and I thought that um, I'd like to back my pawn up, so... He castled, I bring my knight here with the idea of bringing my uh, pawn to f5. Uh, the evaluation does not show this to be a good move at all. It still uh, wants me to push c5. Um, which is interesting to me. Um, so I proceeded with my plan, uh, which the evaluation does not it seems to be kind of even. And here I think he had a lot of trouble trying to come up with a plan. I, I don't think he knew what to do because um, at this time we're on move 22. And uh, I've, by this point, um, I've, he's now below time with me. So I have 35 minutes left on my clock. Uh, and he's got 33, roughly, at this particular instance. So um, a lot of these next moves have uh, brought him back to equal. So time control-wise, uh, we're very even. And uh, it, it seems as though the game is fairly even. So I don't know exactly what he was doing. So I was, I wanted to push, you know, my plans were to try to push my pawns. Um, I want to get my bishop here, push this pawn. Um, I had other ideas of actually trying to get my rooks doubled up on this particular, um, this here, and then this here, and then getting a battery going. But um, he really went through, um, oh geez, back. Okay, something has gone awry here. So we were on move 20, uh, 22, 20. All right. So, all right. So I've completed my plan and I'm coming up with a new plan here with trying to push my pawns and get, uh, some sort of open file or counterplay. Um, okay. So he, he moves, um, rook to E1. Uh, rook f to e1, 
I continue with my plan. He moves his king over with the idea of bringing his knight here. Uh, I'm sure to probably try to protect this square. I'm guessing. So I move bishop to f4. He brings, uh, my idea was to uh, bring my bishop to here to go after the pawn, but uh, obviously he protected this. Um, I'm not exactly sure. I'm trying to think back to the game why I was making this move. I think, okay, I was expect. yeah, that was the deal. I was expecting him to double up the rooks and um, this is exactly what I, I was coming after this pawn here um, so he would I kind of gave him the idea so I wanted to try to undermine his bishop and I I calculated all this expecting it to work um, thinking that I was okay right here um, and as the evaluation bar shows uh, I clearly was not um, because here is where I kind of went went wrong. So this was the this was where I my game took a turn, um, and it took a, a deep turn for the worse. So I think the best move here would be rook to e seven. Yeah. But um, here's where my game starts to fall apart. Um, my idea was to come after this pawn not thinking he could uh, thinking that he'd be able to handle it pretty quickly and um, I was hoping that uh, going into an endgame that my bishop was going to be far superior to his rook or his knight because we've got a lot of there's a lot of open files um, come to find out that was actually not the case so after this point um, it seems to steadily decline for me, and I'm not exactly sure why. So clearly my plan here was to uh, get exactly what I wanted, um, but it was poor uh, long-term calculation because this was just not good for me. Um, the knight ends up dominating the game from here on out, and there's very little that I can do about it. Um, what I did not calculate uh, was this particular pawn push and undermining this backwards pawn and being able to just break through and then these two pawns I just can't stop, uh, which is exactly what happens. Um, so we'll come back to this critical moment. I wanna get through the rest of the game. Um, so the critical moment is what to move 24. So move 24 is where the critical breakdown is for me. Um, so we go through, I did exactly what I wanted. Um, all right, so 29. He moves rook back to b1, coming after this. And I calculated him coming to here. I did not calculate him coming to here to come after this pawn. Um, I did consider coming here, but um, it did not work. And I, I think my only try here was e5, and it clearly did not work. Um, we'd do some exchanges. I was hoping that I would just be better. I wanted to bring my rook or my bishop here it looks as though i do have some serious chances um, when he comes back but um again i failed to find those particular moves uh g5 would have been best here um according to the engine but um now he's gained control of this file i was expecting him to come here um, or even come back after this pawn, but um, now he solidifies it, and really, uh, I have no way of getting back through this way. And uh, here I was just expecting that I could do well with my bishop, um, but he's got such great control over the dark squares that um, there's nothing I could do. And as you follow the rest of this game, I just don't even have a chance. 
and he just these pawns are just too powerful uh, as they go through and you can see the evaluation bar just get worse and worse um, we'll go through the end here but um, as you can see it's just bad news for me and I miscalculated and at this point I was really tired and we're approaching time control so um, I was trying to go for some sort of stalemate, but uh, when he moved here, I, I resigned. Um, so let's go back some. There was a moment in this particular instance where it seems as though, did I equalize? Here is not so bad for me. Um, I did calculate this. Um, but I, I thought it was too passive, so I was afraid of this. And let's see, was this anything? Did it even matter? Um, oh, I did not see this move. That would have made a lot of sense. Okay, so this still would have been a game. Wow, that's uh, kind of a bummer. I missed this over the board. Um, I was really tired. We're about three hours into the game, so I haven't been thinking that long for a long time. So um, I was really mentally exhausted at this point. Um, I did see this. Um, I did see this move, but um, I didn't see the follow up after this. Um, I thought for sure I'm, this, I have no way to stop him getting this pawn. Uh, that's where I calculated, but um, this is clearly. This would have made for a better game. And uh, at this point, I was ahead in time on uh, move 30. Is that what this is, 30? So on move 30, um, I stopped taking notes. Uh, but I do remember that it was uh, I had a time advantage uh, still at this point. But um, yeah, I didn't. I missed that. So that was one critical spot in the game that we could have won um, and here it's just it's just poor trades and um, this is just from exhaustion at this point I'm just tired um, it looks like this is also a potential spot where I could have still equalized so the game was still a game at this point so it wasn't completely thrown away um, so it looks like I had a few options um, it wants g5 here and then, yeah, it's it's fairly equal at this point. So it would have been a it would have been a game still. Um, knight to f three, and bishop to f four. Um, yeah, and it would have it would have been a game. So unfortunately, I didn't find these wonderful moves over the board. Um, I think the other critical spot was before I did this. So I still had chances here. Um, that seemed to give the game away. But uh, here it still wants g5. So I missed g5, uh, looks like, twice in this particular game. But um, I'm proud of my game. I, I felt as though I played really strong. I felt like I played really good moves. Um, I felt like I had really good ideas and plans. Um, I just wasn't able to pull it out. Um, you know, if we go back, here is, that's a critical, I guess not mistake, but uh, at a critical point where it seems as though I, I try to push it back. Oh, even, see, this is still okay for me, even it's even. That was, okay, so this move, 26, not an ideal move. Um, my plan here was still actually decent. Um, obviously centered around uh, positioning these pawns and, and anchoring them to, to C5 would have been a good move here, according to the engine. Um, but yeah, that uh, A5 was a poor move. Um, 
that not that particular move, but uh, so twenty nine. Uh, the other critical move um, would have been instead of pushing there, uh, bishop to c7. So move 30 was also another move. That was not good. Uh, so my a5 move and my e3 move seemed to be the ones that were not awesome. But I still even had a game... There at any point where I'm still okay? No, and here's where it just kind of goes apart. So, yeah, an interesting game. I felt like I played really strong, but um, obviously uh, time controls were really tough. Uh, I wasn't used to playing a game that long for a long time. Uh, so mentally, I was just drained. I was getting into an end game, and I, I just kind of took for granted that the knight could be so powerful against my bishop. And there's little I could do. Um, so I did try my best. There's a lot of lines there that seem to be uh, more favorable. I think the crucial point was the, if we go back far enough, uh, I think this one right here, um, A5, move 26. And then I think... Um, yeah, move 24, knight to b, knight to d7 was not ideal here. I think g5 uh, would have been the a better way to continue and just keep putting pressure on his king. Um, yeah, because he's got a he's got a lot to deal with. There's three pawns and my bishop and my knight being here, and then maybe doubling up my rooks. I feel like that would have been a much better plan. I just didn't see this over the board, but a good game. Uh, if you have any suggestions on what I could have done better, maybe you see some lines that uh, I'm not seeing. Uh, I'd love to hear your guys' information. Please leave some comments down below. Uh, so game three in the books, I ended up losing and resigning, but uh, it was a good experience, and I felt like I learned a lot from this game, and I look forward to my next opponent. Uh, thanks for your comments, and I look forward to seeing you guys in the next game. Take care and be good.